It's the end of October 2022 and I want to take you on a greenhouse tour. So let's do it. So here we are in our 100 by 30 feet greenhouse, which is absolutely massive. I'm Natalie Lucier from Waykeeper Farm and Nerdery, and I'm so excited to give you this tour of our greenhouse. So I'm gonna walk you through what we have growing right now, what we learned the hard way not to do, also what worked really well for us. So let's do it. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have raised beds. So initially when we did the build of the greenhouse, we brought in some more topsoil, but because we started building the greenhouse before the winter and we didn't plant anything, the greenhouse was totally not finished, we didn't have a roof or anything. We had a bunch of runoff and we lost a lot of that topsoil that we brought in. So we had to bring in a ton of compost, which luckily we live on a farm and we have uh, horses boarding here. So we had a ton of horse manure that we were able to use. And so you can see that we have a lot of soil here that is pretty much just pure composted horse manure. And that's what we put in our raised beds to get started because we just didn't have any other options. And it's worked out pretty well. I would say that it would be great if it was a little bit more composted some of it and it does tend to get a little bit more dry than if it was soil but it's much much better than the clay subsoil which we have here and you can see that this soil is pretty hard and even though that soil looks terrible we had a ton of weeds that pretty much took over the greenhouse until we were able to tame everything and put raised beds everywhere, but it still grew lots of wild weeds and that helped to improve the soil where we were able to let it grow until we were ready to put raised beds there. Some of the things that worked really well for us in terms of the bed setup was to reuse a lot of wood that we had um, that were really meant to be used for fencing. All the wood for the raised beds came from fences that we took down when we moved to the farm that we no longer needed. So we were able to repurpose a lot of that wood. And then all of the pathways are currently done with wood chips and that has kept a lot of the weeds down. Even though we do have some wild stuff growing in the pathways, like for example, this lamb's ear or mullein. Um, and so yeah, we've been able to keep most of the weeds down. And I will say that the crop that has done the absolute best for us has been Swiss chard. It got started easily, quickly, and has just kept going and we actually can't keep up with how much we get of the Swiss chard. So we definitely love it, appreciate it. And also, uh, you know, we like to try different things too and not just eat one vegetable. So it's been a little bit tricky. This plant here is a pomegranate that we started from seeds. So we just bought pomegranates at the store, put the seeds in some soil and this is the result. So we have a couple of them here. This is a beautiful one here that's growing really well. So this is a subtropical or semi-tropical plant and so we'll see how it does this winter. Um, this is one of the things with the greenhouse that we actually don't know what it's gonna be like for this winter. It might actually freeze, it might not. Um, so for example, overnight we had a frost here and it definitely got down below zero Celsius. And in the greenhouse it stayed at four Celsius. So we were able to not have anything die, nothing got frosted in here. And so um, we'll see how that holds up. And especially as we have less sun during January and February, for example. And so this is kind of all an experiment. These side panels across the whole length of the greenhouse have been extremely productive. And I suspect it's because when we get rain, the rain comes out on the side of the greenhouse. And so it just waters a little bit more than what I was able to do with our hose. And so these are our carrots and they're doing really, really well. We've actually been harvesting a lot. My son absolutely loves carrots. So he just comes in and just chops on carrots at any point of the time of the day he can. You might be curious about these row covers that I have here on some of the beds. And I ended up putting these on because we were having so many cabbage caterpillars that were attacking all of the brassicas that we were growing. So these are all brand new brassicas I ended up starting later in the summer because we were having such a hard time with cabbage caterpillars. All of the cabbages and all of the other greens like kale and collards and all of that, they just got completely decimated. And as soon as we switched to this type of row cover, we were able to exclude them and they haven't had any issues since then. So here's an example of that type of damage that we were getting. So this is kind of what's left of some of the cabbages that really just got eaten pretty much to death. So you see this one is coming back after it got a little bit colder. And so maybe the cabbage worms won't get that new little cabbage that's coming out. And you can see here, we have our tomatoes trellised up on these beams as much as we can. 
and our tomatoes did so incredibly well. We have made so much tomato sauce that I don't know how we're going to eat all of it, to be honest. So we'll definitely be giving some away for gifts this year, <laughs> but you can see here our tomatoes have gone pretty much gangbusters and they've also kind of fallen as they've continued to grow and get bigger. And it's kind of a tomato jungle in a way here. And what I've read and talked to other people who have greenhouses is that as long as it doesn't freeze, the tomatoes will continue to grow. And the only downside is that they might not ripen as much as we get less and less sun um, during the winter. So I'm actually kind of hoping that some of these plants might survive and we might be able to overwinter them all the way and then just have more tomatoes in the spring once it warms up. But I'm not really holding my breath. If that doesn't happen, that's totally fine too. So one of the other plants that I was really excited about growing in a greenhouse in the summer is ginger. So this is ginger right here and it's a root that we use to pretty much spice our food, make tea with, and it's just so cool that we were able to actually grow it. It's looking really, really nice and I'm excited to harvest it soon. I'm kind of just waiting to see if it gets much colder. Um, you can see it definitely got a little cold. I think ginger prefers when it stays above 10 degrees Celsius. So you can see some of it got some damage, but it's also still alive and growing. So I'm gonna try to extend it as much as possible. Here we have our eggplants, which we've eaten a ton of. I don't think there's any currently still growing, but we've got flowers on the way, so we might actually have some more. But again, we might have a hard time uh, ripening them as it gets colder. So yeah, we've got one coming down here. You can see that. So this is one of our fig trees, and you can see we have figs on it. So again, I have no idea if they're going to be ready for us to eat before it gets too cold in here or if we should expect to get some next year instead. This is the second fig tree which also has figs coming and that's super super exciting too. So this raised bed here has a ton of bok choy which is one of our favorite veggies. You can see some kale in the back there too and what we also got because we brought in so much manure is a ton of these little tiny weeds. So these are definitely from the manure and from the compost that we brought in that maybe just wasn't composted fully or, you know, the horses ate some of this grass and then it ended up as seeds in our compost, which is a little extra work for us to make sure it doesn't over crowd our veggies, but it's really not that bad. And this back here is our peas and we eat them usually as snap peas. And I'm kind of surprised by how many we've been able to harvest already. Uh, we've had several meals worth and they just keep on coming. So I, I love these peas. They're super awesome. Our kids love them. And yes, this is a cold season veggie. So we're able to plant it uh, in September and now we're basically getting a ton of veggies out of it. So down here in this bed we have some spicy peppers. So these have done really really well and they, these are actually ready to harvest as well. Um, but yeah we make a hot sauce with some of these peppers. We've got tons of little cherry tomatoes still over here. We basically can't keep up with tomatoes <laughs> as, as they're growing in here. So definitely next year we might not plant as many tomatoes, but we definitely got a ton of tomatoes. We'll be sharing, continuing to share with everyone that we can. And down here in this raised bed, we had uh, a bunch of string beans earlier in the season. And now we have planted some parsley and more carrots. Uh, carrots is something I'm trying to plant more of just because my son absolutely loves them. And you can see we have another pomegranate here. And this here is a clementine that again, we just got a fruit from the store, planted one of the seeds that was in the clementine. It was in the house for maybe six months or so. Then we put it in the greenhouse. And again, I don't know how well it'll do this winter, but I'm hoping that because in certain parts of the world, they would call their greenhouses an orangerie. Uh, they really were using them to grow oranges. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it'll stay 
and survive even if it doesn't thrive this winter. So over here you can see we have some cucumbers growing. I had a really hard time with our cucumbers this year and um, I just had to plant them over and over again. The plants kept dying, they did not produce a lot. But these ones were a certain kind of cucumber plant that are really, really amazing for greenhouses. They don't need a pollinator. And I think that might have been what was causing issues is that we were opening the doors in the summer so that we could have bees and other pollinators come in. And we did have some, we could definitely see them, but just maybe not enough. And so we weren't able to get as many cucumbers in the beginning of the season, but now we're end of October, almost early November, and we are still getting really nice, beautiful cucumbers. So this right here is our olive tree and it's uh, brand new to us. We just got it from a local nursery and I'm hoping it overwinters well. And uh, again, it's a semi-tropical or subtropical tree. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it does. Over here, you can see I experimented with growing potatoes in containers and it actually worked really well, especially for baby potatoes, but they actually were able to grow full size, beautiful potatoes as well. So if you don't have a whole lot of space and you have large pots and soil, then definitely consider growing potatoes in pots as well. They're really easy to get out when it's time to harvest. So those were some of the top plants and things I wanted to show you. Um, some of the things that did not work for us in the greenhouse is really the timing. The timing made such a difference. So everything we planted early on before it got too hot did really, really well. And so we got our greenhouse pretty much ready in March or April. And what everything we planted in April did really well because it wasn't too hot yet. And as soon as May and June hit, it was just way too hot in here. Everything we tried to start just died. So what I ended up doing is I would start seeds indoors and then when it was established I would plant them out here and transplant them and then just water a lot. I had to water sometimes twice a day to make sure that things didn't die in here and it would get like I said 50 degrees Celsius during the day. It was just way way too hot. So we're still learning and we're thinking of putting a shade cloth on the outside of this greenhouse in the summer next year. Um, for the winter it's kind of we'll see what happens and I'll definitely do another update and show you what survives, what doesn't, and what's going on in the winter. Some of the hardest part of getting this greenhouse established was really building the raised beds and bringing in all the soil, which we had to do with wheelbarrows and all kinds of, you know, tons of backbreaking labor. And even now we're still bringing in more compost because as we harvest vegetables and fruits, we're just taking from the soil. So we wanna be sure to just recalibrate and bring in that nutrition for the next thing that we're going to plant. So down here, you'll see that I have some ground cherries. So these are amazing. And I love that we're still getting ground cherries at this time of the year. Um, and so I also have some strawberries down here and it's a case of if we have enough sun, they'll hopefully ripen and uh, maybe we'll end up with some November strawberries. And <laughs> that would be fun too. And over here I have lots and lots of calendula flowers and um, some green onions and a couple of weeds here <laughs> that I should probably uh, remove. But here this is a volunteer tomato plant and some string beans that are starting to get a little bit affected by the cold, I think. So here's the outside of the greenhouse and you'll see that all the way along we added some straw bales and we did that because we realized that as it was raining, the water was running off the greenhouse and causing runoff of the soil on the outside of the greenhouse. And so we had this gap where the air was coming in under the greenhouse. And so this was sort of our engineering solution of just covering the sides with you know material and eventually maybe it will decompose maybe it'll stay there forever or uh, really just kind of be a good interim solution until we figure out what to do to keep those sides closed properly and as we add more soil maybe on the inside that will also take care of that problem so you can see that we have our barn on the other side and this is very close to our house so we're able to walk from the house from our our back porch essentially into the greenhouse easily. And that was an important consideration for us to make sure that we could get to the greenhouse. Otherwise, you know, if you don't go to the greenhouse often, then you're not going to have good harvests. You're not going to plant more things. And so that was really important for us. Too. If you are curious about all these pipes that I have back here in the greenhouse, then make sure to watch my next video all about the climate battery that powers, cools, and heats this greenhouse.